So the first thing I will do is go over what session state is, what it can do, and then show you how to use it. When you create a Streamlit app and open it in your browser, that starts what we refer to as a session. This is a Python object that exists in memory for you to use. For a Streamlit app, a session exists for as long as the user keeps a tab open and the app's front end maintains an active connection with the back end. That is, as long as the widgets and buttons you see in your browser can talk and send information back to Streamlit. Each time you open a new tab in your browser and go to your app that starts a new session. These sessions are independent. That way, if someone in London was using your app, their screen won't be affected by, say, another user in Paris, who's on your app at the same time. So, session is what happens in the browser, and the state is how we capture that and store the current values of widgets and parameters to use later. That means what session state does is allow you to store those values, parameters, and widget states from previous run-throughs of your Streamlit app. Let's dive in and understand how to use session state. With this release, session state always exists. You can access it just by saying st.sessionState. You can think of session state a bit like a dictionary, where you want to add a key and value pair to your state to remember the history of different widgets and variables when your app reruns. So, the next thing we need to do is put a parameter in state that we can track. We can easily do this and we have two notations. The first one using brackets will remind you a lot of a Python dictionary. And the second one is similar to how you access attributes in an object. Now, because session state remembers everything you put in it, whenever we want to add a value, we first need to check if it's already in our session state. That way we don't constantly hard code a value every time the script runs. So, first we check if the key we want is in the session state object, the first key I'm calling a underscore counter. Then, if it's not already being tracked, I can add that as a key using the square brackets notation and set that key to have a particular value, in this case, zero. Let's do another example using the other method. I will add a key that will be set to either true or false. First, I check that I'm not already tracking it, then I can add that key using the dot notation, st.sessionState.boolean, and set that to false. Now I can write session state to the screen and you can see that both a underscore counter and boolean along with their values are there. Perfect. As a developer, you can access these using their keys. If you want to find out a single value using its key, you can again use either the bracket method using st.sessionState, square brackets, and the key name, such as a counter, or the dot notation using st.sessionState dot the key name, like boolean. Getting access to all the keys can be done using the keys function with st.sessionState dot keys. To access all the values, you can call the values function of your session state with st.sessionState dot values. And finally, to access them as a pair, use the items notation of your state, which is st.sessionState.items. Great, now we know the basics. The next thing we want to do is update a value we have stored in our state. To do this, I will make a button that will update both the a counter value using square brackets and the boolean value with dot boolean. Now, when I press the button, the counter goes up by one, and Boolean switches back and forth between true and false. All right, the last thing you may want to know about session state is how to clear it if you wanted to start over for any reason. You can clear the entire state by accessing the keys and deleting them with DEL. After you've done that, your state is empty. Okay, okay, I hear you. All that's great, Mirza, but how do I connect my widget to my session state object? Well, don't worry, that's super easy too. First, let's get rid of all these write statements in our app and start fresh. Here's what connecting a widget to our session state looks like. Say I have a slider and I want to access the state of my slider from my code. I can do that by adding a key argument to the slider 
And now this will show up in my st.session state. Whenever I interact with my slider, my session state is linked to it and it will automatically update to have the newest slider value. But let's say you want to use a value stored in your state to update a widget. Let's set up a scenario. Say you have a radio button for three options in your app. It may look something like this, where you have a list of option names that you pass to a radio button. And depending on which option is chosen by the user, you write some text next to it. But what you really want is a next option button at the bottom that your user can press to advance the option. Now using session state, this becomes a breeze. After we create the option names, I create the button and add some logic in. If the next option button was pressed, I can check the current option through my session state and actually update that to the next one. I have set this up so that when I'm on the last option, letter C, I go back to option A. Awesome! Now I have radio options that I can control by pressing this next button below it. Every input widget can be updated by session state in this way. The last thing I will show you today is how callbacks work using either the onChange or the onClick parameter. The onChange or onClick parameter accepts a function name as an argument. This function is an example of a callback. Normally, when you press a button, Streamlit reruns your script from top to bottom. Now, using the onChange parameter, when Streamlit detects the change in the widget state, you tell Streamlit, yes, do everything you did before, but also, here's a bit of extra code I wrote that I want you to run before you start the script over. This basically gives Streamlit one extra task to do before rerunning your Python code. OnChange will work with input widgets such as st.slider and st.numberInput, while OnClick works for one-off widgets like stButton and stFormSubmitButton. To show this, I'm going to make a widget converter out of two number inputs. First, let's create both the number inputs side by side. One will be a weight in pounds and the other will be the weight in kilograms. The goal is to be able to put a number in either input and have the other one update with the correct weight. For example, if I put a weight of 10 pounds in here, I want the number displayed in the kilogram input to be 4.54. I can do this by using the onChange parameter for both. Remember, onChange takes the name of a function that you code that tells Streamlit what to do when a widget state has changed. For the pounds number, I will set onChange equal to a function called lbs2kg, which will convert pounds to kilograms. For the kilogram input, I will add onChange equal to a function called kg to lbs that will convert kilograms to pounds. Then I make each of these functions. The first, lbs2kg, will set st.sessionState.kg equal to the weight in pounds divided by 2.2. The second, kg2lbs, will set st.sessionState.lbs equal to the weight in kilograms multiplied by 2.2. This time, when I put a value in one of the number inputs, the other one automatically shows that same weight converted into the other unit. To try out state, upgrade Streamlit to version 0.84 or above. If you're interested in learning more, check out our blog post and our documentation for more examples. Ta-da! It's just that easy. Happy Streamlitting! Oh,